Hello and welcome to Dive Bar Comedy episode 76. I am Wild Joe. And uh, if you all have been listening to the past couple of episodes, we put on a tribute show for my late husband, G.T. Tapalian, who unexpectedly passed away in December. So we still have some of the shows that we had recorded uh, before he died and um, some of the last audio footage that uh, was taken of him performing. So today we have a show from December 10th at the Lotus Lounge. Uh, GT was putting on a classic GT performance and uh, helping me out with interviews with some of our favorite comics. Uh, he had uh, Heather Winter, Grace Belint, and Sizzle on this episode. Now, Sizzle uh, is somebody new to the comedy scene who just started a few months ago, but GT had kind of taken him under his wing because he said he reminded him of himself. Um, unfortunately, Sizzle used that as a joke and was uh, playing it not just at GT's show, but all around town saying uh, that uh, GT reminded had told him that Sizzle reminded him of himself and um, because nobody liked GT either. So it was kind of a negative uh, joke and GT was a bit offended and, and he had him put a stop to it. But I thought it was kind of cute and funny, at least on GT's show, and it got a good laugh. So anyway, uh, you know, with comedy, it, it's hard to make jokes that are at the expense of other comics. You know, it, it's... Are they, they being too sensitive or, you know, is it all in good fun? It's hard to draw the line sometimes. But anyway, we are keeping the shows rolling at least twice a month, sometimes three times a month. So we have the second Tuesday of every month at the Lotus Lounge. And the next one will be coming up then, uh, I guess, in February, February 11th, and then we have the last Thursday of every month at the Liquid Zoo, and the Liquid Zoo is out in the valley in Van Nuys, so we have that all booked out for January, February. We're starting to work on March. We did a, a show at a new place called Witch's Brew recently, and we're going to be bringing that out uh, soon, and we're also returning there on March 2nd, so we'll have a show at Witch's Brew, which is in North Hills, also in the San Fernando Valley. And that one is a little little classier. It's a little nicer than a normal dive bar. So it doesn't look like much from the outside, but once you get inside, it's uh, decorated really nicely and really cool place to hang out. So come on out, have a drink or two or three. The bar, um, the bar wants people to be buying drinks. They get upset by the uh, sober people that are just buying water. So if you guys are heavy drinkers, dive bar comedy is the place for you. So come check us out live. Or uh, if you are not in the LA area, just keep on subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts or check out divebarcomedy.com. So without too much further ado, I will get into the recording from December 10th at Lotus Lounge. And up first is the co-founder of this dive bar comedy show and the founder of GT's Comedy Jam, GT Topalian. We miss him so much already, and I hope all of you can enjoy uh, some of his last stand-up moments. So you guys ready to get this thing jumping off? Yeah. I'm Mr. Cedia Forster, aka Poppy Carlo, a skit bag motherfucker and a bad man, and I'm here to get this thing started. We gonna jump right into it because it's cold as shit, and we ain't got time to fuck around. You ready? I said you ready. So put your hands together, show some love for me. that says all of this stuff. He is our Armenian, a gangster taco, a bad motherfucker. GT the bad. Man, this guy should be 
like announcing a football game. It's like,
No, not as high as your whole life. <laughs> well, the other day I woke up, I told my wife I want to put my dick in your mouth. Whoa. <laughs> I got a hot wife. I want to put my dick in your mouth. You know what she's telling me? My mouth is asleep. I was like, what the fuck? I didn't stand up with this shit. I thought when you, I thought when you get married, you can get mouth under money. No, that's not true. That's not true at all. So, so what, you know what? I was really determined, you know what I mean? I need to get my rocks off, you know? And some chick, some chick got me hoarding. I was like, fuck it, I was hoarding. So I went in the garage, Got my dick all hard. P picked up a black spray paint and spray painted my dick black. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure it's jet black. And I went back inside the house. I'm like, hey, honey, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Whoa. Oh my gosh, she right away went to town, people. Because she loves black dick. <laughs> and then I said, honey, if we were to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison between my dick and a black dick, which dick would you like? Which, which dick would you want? She goes, your dick. Oh, I was like, oh, sweet, that's so nice of you. You know? But she said, yeah. It would have been better if you wear a ski mask. Oh, I said, oh, what a whore. Only a whore would say something like that. Better word. So I went down to fucking South LA to some swap meet and bought myself a ski mask. I'm some Korean lady. I'll be fucking over the ski mask. So never have, you know, now I have a son. Now I have a, I have a, I have a son. I'm looking at my son. My son don't look like me at all. You know, he looks like some white boy. He looks like some Armenian in disguise. You know, when I look at him, I can't tell him. But like, when I hold him, I can tell he's my son. But when I look at him, he don't look like me at all. He has light eyes and light hair and chiseled face or something. So that's why you should never fuck your wife with a ski mask. You're gonna end up, the kid's gonna end up not looking at you, period. <laughs> yeah. Alright, thanks a lot, guys. Hey, we got header winner. Hey guys, what's up? How's what's going? up? We got a lot of haze and then hey, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. So uh, we, we, I heard your podcast. You were on our podcast at the Liquid Zoo. You yeah. were killing it. Yeah, thank yeah. you. You thank were you. doing really good. To. On the awesome. interview or the, the uh, <laughs> her, stand up? Her stand up. She, oh. she was doing really well. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm really, you know. I'm gunning for the for the gold right now. Good so, job. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying to perform as much as I can everywhere. So where are you performing? Uh, literally everywhere. The Ice House, the Comedy Store, Flappers. Um, I'm gonna be auditioning for like Flappers and that kind of stuff too soon. So anywhere I can get some stage time, I'm going up. Wow. You, know you have a I mean? lot of friends that will come see your shows. Cause some of those places you have to bring friends. I know, and it's uh, those are tough. I do and I don't. I mean, I have a lot of friends that have came to the shows. Those but are like five person bringers i know well Five. the good thing is is that i have i've been with the certain promoters for so long that they kind of they give me a little a little I slide see. through so it, it makes it easy you know That's but good. um yeah it's tough it's tough i'm trying to get booked friends get of, sick of you after a while. i know my no sister you, you know what though my sister she comes to every single show Whoa. she listens to jokes every single time wow i know she's a she's a ride or die that is yeah so nice. i know right and like she's heard so many of these jokes over and over and over again because i try to work them out and i'm like wow oh. and she laughs i mean even like time. madonna i went to see once i'm not gonna go <laughs> see her every day i wouldn't either right i know i i'm like how do you expect me to get that many people out yeah. This is LA. Yeah. It's got to be very. Uh, Even very... once a month. If I had to go see Madonna once a month, I, I mean, I'd pro it'd probably get old after a while. It'd probably get old, yeah. Although, Madonna, I don't know. Who knows? She doesn't show up until like three hours after her show starts. So, you know, maybe you'd be like excited. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. Wow. So, you know. 
Uh, it's it's tough, but it's I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to audition now. Because if you audition, okay. then they book you instead. Well, I, I auditioned uh, Flappers and was Did getting you? booked every month, yeah, once see? a month, and I had people coming. Yeah, at least one person. And then after like a year or two, it kind of started dwindling because uh, it was the same kind of maybe. 10 people yeah and then you know then after a like, while they are like uh even if i change my jokes yeah and even if there's different comics on the lineup they yeah. still get kind of sick of it after a while right people, then i got married so i lost like all the guys <laughs> yeah that makes it tough too because yeah. then it's like that was that's how you get them to come out right yeah that, I, you know i should just go on those dating sites exactly and just be like meet me at, i used to yeah. do that oh my god meet that's genius this yeah oh my god so come out to this bar on this date it's gonna yeah. be really fun and then they're gonna be like all right and you're yeah, gonna have seven dudes me. lined up watching that's you that's like the new catfishing now. <laughs> just <laughs> come to my comedy show <laughs> find some like a hot lingerie that. model <laughs> like I'm gonna try comedy for the first oh my time God, yes. come to my show <laughs> yeah and then you're like how did you get 75 people to come and I'm like well <laughs> Tinder, thank you. That's what I did. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. That wow. is such a good idea. Yeah, we're Tinder. all going to use it. Yeah, we're all going to, everybody's going to use it. And then it doesn't matter if everybody's Guys aren't smart it. enough to catch on. So. Oh, there's enough people in LA. Yeah, exactly. They, they won't realize. So, you, you would know? think there's enough people. But I went yeah. on Tinder. I did the one mile radius. I ran into like 10 people I knew on there. Do you know what's crazy? I'm, I don't think I've ever run into somebody. I don't know I'm on like 16 Well, I, I, I uh, swiped through every single person within like like a game like a video game <laughs> in three days yeah. i got everybody in a one mile radius because oh i just swiped man. non-stop and then uh oh then i had to increase my radius to like two miles <laughs> three miles and every time you just keep going up more and more and more well, I, I, I just did it as fast as possible i got through like all the thousands of guys <laughs> Right that's away. Pretty genius. That's pretty genius. Uh, yeah. I have like, I have like, uh, show, I'm on like right? six different apps. I'm, so I don't know how I haven't ran into somebody yet. Farmers yeah. only. You got to get on that one. I know. I thought about that. J date even, yeah. you know, because they run Hollywood. So why oh, not get up true. there? I know. That's like, true. I know. That's my Yeah. My friend, uh, last name Schwartz, uh, <laughs> she got this, uh, this guy who is a producer on, uh, the Howard Stern show. Right? And yeah. He wasn't that good looking, but she actually put him on a diet, changed his, uh, his, style yeah and he was much better looking like a year after they started dating well and then he left her for a different woman no, right? no, they, they, they were together for a while nice. and then they kind of i don't know what happened at the end okay. they're still friends interesting nice they're still friends i know but, uh, i'm, t- I'm t- i would convert for a job you know what i mean i would do it willing to convert that's actually one of the categories on j-date is it? my friends my my is it really my girlfriends this is years ago but they were asian girls but they were like go on j-date that's where yeah they were and they said that there's a category called willing to convert what oh well yeah i guess uh, i really guess care. i'm signing up for j-date after this I have a nice religion yeah you know? i don't I mind it a, a beautiful religion yeah they have great food yeah I no, like we're all that. converting no, well, i can't <laughs> i'm our, i converted to armenian i did <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all, you know. They've also got some pretty good food. Yeah, they got some good food, too. Yeah, yeah. I've to Same as seeing Madonna, though. You don't want to do it every single day. No, no. Just God, once in no. a while. Yeah, yeah. Only, only here and there. But that's why you live in L.A., right? Yeah. There's all kinds of food here. That's right. That's right. You get a mixture of everything. <laughs> oh, my anyway. God. I love it. I all love right. it. Well, I'm glad you're on six apps. Yeah, getting six a mixture. apps. At least. Yeah, at least Getting six. a mixture of everything. Trying, yeah, yeah. I'm all the all the all the free ones is what I'm on. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, for people that are looking for you, want to book you up. Uh, where can they find you online? They can find me on Instagram, Facebook, all that under Heather R. Winter. Uh, my middle name starts with an R, but I'm not going to tell you the rest of it. Ooh. Leave a little, leave a little mysterious. Yeah. yeah, leave it a little bit there. Um, I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all that social media jazz. Follow me on all of it. I post all my videos. Awesome. On there. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me on again, yeah, guys. Thanks, for, <laughs> thanks, thanks guys. for coming on. Yeah. Thank you, guys. So you ready for this next comedian? She's a ball of sunshine, and just like this season, her last name matches it just right. So you ready for this comedian?
up with customer service at weed shops though? You guys feel me on that, or are you guys just too high when you go in there and you don't fucking know? Oh, what happened? Oh, I'm gonna tell you. That's fine. <laughs> what I am doing. Um, no, I just feel like every time I go in, like they just don't. It's like I'm not there, right? They're just like, yeah. Uh, what can I get for you? Oh. And I'm like, I want weed. Oh, <laughs> I'm here for it. No, I have anxiety though, so I have specific types of weed that I like to smoke, you know what I mean? Ones that don't give me anxiety, right? And I want to go into my weed shop and I want them to be, you know, educated on what fucking strands are gonna give me anxiety or not, right? That's so much to ask for a, a place you work, the things you are selling to know what you're, I work at a restaurant. You think I don't know the food that's gonna give you an allergy? I fucking know, right? Right? If you're like, I have a nut allergy, I'm like, well, here's a peanut coleslaw, why don't you just eat that and that's fine. I'm gonna do that. So it upsets me that I go in every time and I'm just like, I have anxiety, I want weeds that are metal, like an indica or something, and they're just like, yeah, yeah, try this, whatever. And I'm like, what did you do? Like, give me a fucking description. Fucking pisses me off. I miss old school dealers, though, you know? Ones that you had to call for your weed, right? They were the best, because they were so excited to hear from you every single time, weren't they? You call them up, they're like, hey, what's up? Hey, hey, what's up? What's up, Heather? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Right? Come on, you know Mrs. Zeno's, right? You know, you just, come on, those old school dealers were the shit. You're like, yeah, man, what, what strange you got this time? Oh, 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 you want, okay, so I got this, it does this to you, it makes you feel real good, not anxious at all, I swear to God, I promise you, you get a cup of coffee and it'll mellow you out, it's perfect. Like, they did everything, right? My weed dealer was the best, too, because he was also a pizza with delivery guy, right? So I had, like, the 420 special. I just get, like, a large pizza, a fucking two-liter of Coke, and an eighth of weed. <laughs> it was awesome. It was cool. Sorry, your guy's weed dealer sucks. Nobody was that excited. This guy over here. Oh, no. Right? Yeah, and he's, he's probably everyone's weed dealer. No, you. I'm looking at you. That is a woman. You're a man. I should have. Okay. This got awkward. Real quick. Um... Now they're fighting. Now I just called the four. They're fighting. Just have a survey, so we're all in here for fucking season. For the moment. That's what, what's up for debate now, right? We don't know. So, anyway. Anyway. Did you guys ever have um, imaginary friends when you were little? Yeah. Do you still have them? <laughs> No, I did. Everybody did, right? And they were awesome. You told all your secrets to them and shit. It was great. Now, they just turn into like these annoying critics that just judge everything you do in your life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right? So annoying. Like, everything. Because they know everything about you, right? They know that like you forge your dad's signature on all of his checks and shit. <laughs> and like, haunt your teddy bear as much as possible. <laughs> it's not a conscience, guys. It's your annoying your imaginary friend Amy who's coming back to judge you and everything. Ooh, you guys don't like that one. Alright. <laughs> you like sex. I'll talk about he was talking about blowjobs, so I'll go into some sex stuff or something like that. Is anybody superstitious? You guys need me to define it? Thank you. You're the only one that knows what that word means. Cool. Everybody else looks at me like what are you what is Okay. Uh well I'm a superstitious masturbator. So <laughs> Yeah. It's a real thing. I uh Whenever I'm having a shitty day, I just rub one out really quick, you know what I mean? It seems to improve. No. Uh, I had a shitty job, um, like most of us do. That's probably why you're in a bar right now, right? Yeah, I had a shitty job. So I applied to a bunch of places, figuring maybe I'd, uh, you know, get a good one. And so I got two calls back, right, to, for interviews. So I was like, fuck, that sucks, two calls. That's, my odds are not in my favor, so. I, uh, I went to the first interview and it didn't go well, um, so I was like, okay, I got like an hour to kill before the next interview, right? So I'll go to my car, and uh, yeah, do you guys not masturbate in your car? <laughs> this guy gets blow up on him, you guys don't masturbate in your car? Are you sure? Yeah, this guy's like, I do, uh, I do. That's how we all get through LA traffic, we're just like, uh, <sighs> Ah, no, no, we're cool, we're cool, we're cool. You can take the parking spot. No, I'm fine right here. I'm fine right here. I'm fine right here. I'm fine right here. Okay. I'm fine right here. All right. That's how I get through traffic, at least. So, if you, I was ever your Lyft driver, you know what I mean? 
I didn't mean to do the, do the favor. I was doing it for myself. You know what I mean? It's what women have to do because most of the time men don't deliver. So I don't know. it's awkward because this room is full of men. <laughs> no, so uh, anyway, so I'm in my car, right? I'm doing my thing because I have this interview coming up. So I'm doing the deed, and I like look up, and I just lock eyes with this guy, right? Yeah, he was homeless though, so yeah, but he was also masturbating, so it worked out. In my favor, right? And so I was just like, all right, I guess we're in it together, right? And here we go, you know, because I can't look away at that point. It's the truth, right? And then like, he, he's looking at me, I'm looking at him. I was excited, so we're going. We finish together, me wherever, him in an envelope as well. Ah, uh, but that's. Where they all blew it out, right? Um, and then I went into the interview and I got the job, so I'm super excited about it, right? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I went to uh, the local bar down the street. Actually, the, I'm going to change this actually now, so let's fuck that up. Uh, I went to the local bar down the street and uh, who's slaying beers back there all of a sudden? is the fucking homeless guy, right? <laughs> I know, it's crazy, right? But yeah, so dream two comes from this city. All right, I'm going to end it there, guys. My name's Heather. <laughs> The Lotus Lounge. With Grace Valent. We, we are not trusted to say it because we've been spelling it wrong all along on all our flyers. Really? No one's been telling one. me. The first one. Okay, cool. So you've experienced some uh, hectic situation here with the bar owner. Yes, so this time I'm going to avoid it. Not even go to the bar. What happened? <laughs> oh, um, you don't drink, right? I don't drink when I'm performing, so I want to be fully awake and alert okay. and, and okay. whatever. And I don't want to drink afterwards because i got to drive home. Right. So on nights when I do shows, I just don't drink. And I wanted to buy a drink for my friend to thank him for coming. And the people at the bar said, you can't. No, their eyes bugged out. And they got really, both of them got really angry. They teamed up on me. What did they say? They said we couldn't walk away from the bar. Like there was a police what? officer standing there until we each bought two drinks. Oh, wow. And I said, but I'm the comedian. Like I'm here in the show. And they said, that doesn't matter. And both of them were very adamant. Their eyes were bugged out. Their nostrils were flaring. And they were so angry. We both looked at each other and went, oh. That's how we came uh, up with dive bar comedy. Uh, <laughs> But what about a soft drink? I don't drink soda because I don't like chemicals in my body. So you would have to just get like two waters, I guess. But who wants to pay for water? It's free. Yeah. That's why they call it water. Right. You shouldn't have to pay for water. Yeah. 
So you don't drink any soda. You don't drink any even the juices beer, at bars. You don't drink. What do you drink? It's not really juice. water. Just I like water. water. Me too. I see you at the gym, so you, uh, you know you. I drink a lot of water. Did you go I to like, the gym today? I did. I went to Equinox. Actually, I went twice. I went in the morning and ran. When they asked twice, I did. Oh my god. Well, I go to Equinox. The Hardcore. membership is literally a fortune, and it goes up yeah. all the time. It is literally a fortune. How much I used is to it a month? Like one fifty for Equinox. Oh, it's not even close to that. Is it a it's car hundreds. payment. It is a car payment. A month. Wow. So I have to go twice a day to get my money's worth. And oh I love it so much. So it's you, not have, hard. you ever oh. see Polly Shore there? He he works out there. At, I have at, not. In the one in uh, uh, West Hollywood. I have seen a lot of other people. I've seen Joel McHale, who is even taller in real life than you would think he is. I don't know who that is. Pa- Joel McHale. Um, is he a basketball? No, he's an oh, actor. Oh, okay. He's been around for a okay. long time. He's an actor. I've seen um, Terry Crews many times. Okay. The football player. Okay. So it's definitely a celebrity spot. Wasn't he on that? Terry Crews, wasn't he on that uh, show, The Masked Singer? Possibly. He's, he's been in a like lot of shows. He's in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. You know what I'm talking about? The Masked Singer. That's a great show. I love that show, but yeah, I don't remember who's on it. Somebody like that. But They've I, had I a lot remember. of football players. Yeah, yeah. I would never be able to remember their names, so I, I wouldn't win on that show. But I don't know how anybody guessed anybody. But they have really good clues. Okay. Like when it was um, Joey Fatone. He said, I was in a boy band, and blah, 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 no strings attached. So right away, we knew it was instinct. And then he did this amazing jump during his dance. Oh, during really? His, during his dance, during while he was singing. But he did this huge jump. Wow. And it was so flamboyant and impressive. It was like, that has to be Joey Fatone. If it's one of the instinct guys, based on the oh, build, wow. based on what he just did, that's Joey Fatone. So when he took his mask know. off. I didn't yeah. know that uh, the instinct guys did great jumps. Oh, Joey Fatone, he's very dynamic. He's known for his jumping. He's known for just being That's like a Van Halen thing. Van Halen used to do huge jumps off the stage, but <laughs> like into the splits, you know? <laughs> wow. All so right. You're from, uh, I forgot where you're from. What I'm city? from Atlanta, Georgia. How people talk like this. Did you Did you do comedy out there? I did not. I just started doing comedy about a year ago, and I don't know why I switched to accent. <laughs> Hey, why not? Why not? I just love doing accents. It's so fun to do accents. You can do it. You, ever, you can do it when you go home. You uh, that'd be accent? fun. You ever do your, your accent on stage? Not for stand-up, but I've been in a show where they wanted me to be a southerner, so I talk like this for the whole show. And you know, you could always do a bit about your hometown or your family or something and put on the accent as part of your bit if you wanted to. I have, actually. I do have a bit about the South. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fun. Well, it'll be fun to see what you have in store tonight. It might have something to do with Christmas. Uh, you are very Christmassy. I, I kind of love today. Christmas. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, well, where can people find you if they want to look you up online? I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can use the hashtag the sparkly comic. You could look up my name, but nobody can spell it, so don't even try. Okay. <laughs> Just use the hashtag the sparkly comic. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. thanks. Glad to have you back on. Thank you so much. Did you have anybody at show up? No. Um, so you guys ready for the glorious woman that's coming to the stage? Yeah! I thought you ready for this woman! Go show up, put it together with a quack, 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 for a grand! Well, you're not the first person to have a problem trying to say my last name. You know who else has had a problem trying to say my last name? Every single person I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> Even if I spell it out, B is in baseball, A is in apple, a. L is in lemon. They look at me like, you're speaking yes. like you. <laughs> because no one ever met a person with a Hungarian last name. I've met Hungarians, and here's the real joke. Whenever I meet an actual Hungarian, as if recently from Hungary just came over, they look at me funny and say, that's actually a first name, and you're pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, okay, well, when my ancestors came over here and settled in Louisiana, I don't know why I have explained the Hungarian history to the Hungarians. When my ancestors came to Louisiana, they settled, they decided, Balin is a very common first name. We're here in America, we're starting anew, we're going to make it a last name. And even though Americans are lazy and usually cut out the letters, we're going to sound out all the letters and say Balin. Oh. <laughs> so that is the answer. It is Balint. Unless you're actually from Hungary, then you can look at me funny and say, you know, it's supposed to be a first name, right? Uh-huh. You're saying it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah. So I love Christmas, in case that's not painfully obvious. <laughs> love, love, love with all my heart. And when I came to LA and found out that most people hate Christmas, it doubled my joy at Christmas. Because I feel like I have to make up for all the people out there that hate Christmas. Anyone in here hate Christmas? Own it, own it, come on. You hate Christmas. Oh, yeah. You hate Christmas. You hate Christmas? No, I love it. Okay, 
Like, oh, my name is Grace Bali. I was like, what? There's an N and a T and an R on the end of that shit. It was Bali. White privilege. <laughs> the brothers, we gotta pronounce everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, my name is Michael Constantine Bonica Pacheco. That, that's, an old, and that's a man's name in the black community. That's not even a woman's name. Rock Erasia, black name. <laughs> Hey there, I'm Wild Joe. This is GT. We got this infamous comedian. One namer, a one name comedian. Called Sizzle, and he's been building a name in the underground comedy scene. <laughs> he's sizzling. He sort of reminds me of me when I first started. Okay. <laughs> he's sort of oh, hated boy. at the same time, loved by people. Oh, well, this should be interesting. All right, Sizzle, what's up? Yeah, nobody likes me. Aww. And, uh, this has been kind of rough, but. I'm still trying. <laughs> well, this should be interesting. Uh, how long have you been doing comedy? Almost three months now. Oh, that's not long at all. Yes, but uh, since I've started, I've realized this. I have a unique talent to feel no shame now. So okay. Just... Did you feel shame before? Like if you're at a party and you were saying inappropriate comments with people? I'm actually very shy. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just trying to get in the groove of stand up now. <laughs> you do remind me of GT because uh, in his personal life, he's kind of quiet. He's, he's not the type of person you would expect. Yes, I'm actually really quiet. And uh, no one's really been taking me serious because I call myself Sizzle. But my real name is Se Hyung Hwang. But that sounds like uh, another language. Yes, it's a Korean name. Okay. I don't use it because if you Google it, it shows all my federal crimes. Oh. So I didn't want people to know all that. So I just well, use Sizzle. But you're the first Korean comic I've ever heard of. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a few Chinese ones out there, but a Japanese, but never a Korean. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you yeah. can be the first. Well, what, what is Margaret Cho? Well, she's Korean. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I guess you're the second. Yeah, I'm actually South Korean, just in case anyone thought, you know, I'm North Korean or something. But you know what? Uh, weren't North Koreans and South Koreans, they were all one thing before, and then they families got separated just depending on which side of the border they lived on? Well, not actually. We would actually all be Chinese if the U.S. didn't help us. So you guys are like a big brother. Oh. So we're different. You know, we're not like Chinese and Japanese. Those guys are like your enemies. We're like your family. Koreans okay. and U.S. are hand in hand. Okay. Well, I like Chinese and Japanese too. They're not our enemies. So. <laughs> they don't like you guys. <laughs> no, I think Chinese and Japanese do like us. I, I know uh, North Koreans don't like us. I watched a documentary once about... Uh, the North Korean from their perspective kind of and, and they like take people to museums and show them things like about how U.S. bombed them in the 60s <laughs> and they really keep the memories fresh in people's minds to, to build that hate for the U.S. but we did do some messed up things over there you know yeah um, you guys dropped a couple uh, bombs over there yeah I mean I can see why they hate us <laughs> and you know what in Asian cultures they're known to have like a longer time frame on things. Like they're not looking at quarterly results for their business. They're looking at hundred year results for their Absolutely. business. So they're remembering the things that happened in the sixties and they still hate us. Yes. Asians are a little different. <laughs> well, you could say you could say whatever you want about Asians, because you are an Asian, so Yes. And I'm really upset that Koreans are classified as fancy Asians along with Japanese and Chinese. Really? Yes, that's what I thought that was a positive thing. No. That's like saying Nazis, Klan members, and Jewish people. Okay, let's call them fancy whites. I see. Okay. It's Asian history. If okay. you knew it, like you would understand. Well, what I know about Koreans is that the women require a lot of gifts and presents, like expensive jewelry and purses and stuff, from their boyfriends. Oh uh, yeah, they're really bougie. They're into all like brand name stuff, you know, showing off. I admit. Yeah. And I, I think they must make more money than the average uh, person or else they wouldn't be able to afford all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, Asians usually have money. Crazy rich Asians. Yeah, that's that was a top famous movie. Yes, but well, I'm not a crazy rich Asian. Ah. Uh. The uh, criminal retard Asian. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, uh, so you've been talking about how comedians don't really like you, certain comedians. There's like an Ohio comedy scene, a comedy group from Ohio, a bunch of comedians that don't like you. Uh, tell us, what's the situation? Well, it's all, it's kind of strange. I get DMs on Instagram randomly from certain comics. They always say, 
hey, some comics were talking bad about you. But just keep going. As long as they're talking, it's good. I don't know how to feel about that. You know, like, why did they tell me that? Wow, no. already, three months in, and you're already, you already have haters. Yes, and then the persons, the Ohio comics, they were like, oh, man, all the Ohio comics are talking about you. And at first <laughs> I thought, fuck Ohio. They don't got shit except LeBron James. I don't care. And he's like, oh, let me show you, let me show you. And I thought, wow, they're talking about me? He showed me this group chat. The first line was, hey, is that Korean guy that's been in the prison and military there? Someone said, yeah, he's fucking crazy. The next line I read was, he's really weird. The next line I read was, not funny at all. And I stopped reading. Oh, man. All right. Well, people are going to be curious about this. So, uh, hey, for people that are listening to this, where can they find you online or on social media? I, mean, I got an Instagram. It's called uh, Ajishi Power, A H J U. S H I power. That's that means old man power in Korean. Cool, cool. Well, this should be interesting. Yeah. Well, nice having you on, Sizzle. Thank you. Appreciate you, GT. Oh, GT right. is crazy enough to book me for the first time. <laughs> you guys ready for this? Yeah! You guys enjoy Korean?
know what you're thinking. Wait a no. minute. What the hell? This guy ain't no goddamn comedian. Hell no. He's like a goddamn criminal. Who the fuck is this old Chinese loser? <laughs> but you are all wrong. I'm Korean. <laughs> Did anybody think I was a really high Mexican? No, <laughs> Ken. Yeah. You know, anytime people been finding out that I've been to prison, they always ask me the same question. They don't ask about my MVP caliber season I had playing second base in the prison softball league. They don't ask me about how on the prison basketball court, every time I got the ball, everyone on the other team's like, he can shoot, he can shoot. <laughs> they don't ask about the finance classes that I taught inmates that got so big the CO shut them down saying I could incite a riot. They always ask the same question, man. Did you get raped in oh. prison? <laughs> it's very demeaning. How come no one ever fucking asked yeah. if I raped anybody? Yeah. In <laughs> Fuck I look like this rape. A professional rapist to get my ass. Five Kobe Bryant's. Two Big Ben Roethlisberger's. Don't worry, guys. I did not rape anybody in prison. I don't know how many life sentences it would take for me to want to rape a man in prison. No one knows what I've been through, guys. If you've never taken a cold shower in prison with a bunch of naked men and one naked dancing transgender named Jacob, <laughs> you don't know what I've been through. Yeah. So her name was J-Lo, and I have nothing against transgenders. But it kind of pissed me off, because I love Jennifer Lopez. It was J-Lo's ass before Kim K's ass. She's beautiful, man. But then I couldn't say nothing because her real name was Javier Lopez. <laughs> you might ask why I'm dressed like this, but I have to. Sometimes I dress normal, and people think I'm a normal person. They try to talk to me. They think I'm a crazy rich Asian. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle Malazaki, she's a crazy rich Asian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a criminal retard Asian. <laughs> you guys see the sign, the hedgehog? I'm not wearing this because of my mental illness, guys. <laughs> I'm wearing this because of my son, Sizzle Jr. <laughs> this was his favorite character. And I lost them in April. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I've been broken ever since, guys. He's the only person that ever said That's I was me. funny. Me so I'm devoting my comedy <laughs> career to him. There's a junior still alive, guys. <laughs> I lost him in a custody case. Ah. My baby mama, man. God I could be up here all night, but yeah! I think I'm running out of time. I can't talk about my baby mama up here all night. So I just sing a song. <laughs> Every night in my dreams, I see you. I see you. Going through my emails and phone. With that being said, guys, love can touch you one time and last for a lifetime. Make sure you get to know the person you're going to marry. You could end up like me. <laughs> I'm
Jason. You guys can do like two shows. You guys can do double shows. Maybe they're That's what I'm talking about. You guys enjoy Sizzle? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that guy. I like that guy. So that's it. Some of our throwback moments from December. Uh, our last, one of our last shows with GT. So uh, we have a little more footage coming out in the future weeks. Also stay tuned for new footage um, with all of our comics because we keep these shows rolling. We have shows every month, second Tuesday of the month at Lotus Lounge in East Hollywood, last Thursday of every month at the Liquid Zoo in Van Nuys, and then we also have Witch's Brew in North Hills coming up on March 2nd. So please come see us live or just keep subscribing to Dive Bar Comedy wherever you listen to podcasts or at divebarcomedy.com. I'm Wild Joe. Thank you so much for listening and please stay tuned in every week.